Hello, I'm Tom Shields. Let's check out the local Wasuyu's Coyote hockey scene. This past weekend's home and home series with the Kelowna Chiefs lets us all know that the rivalry between the two teams flourishes and an Wasuyu's Coyote sweep of the two games are not going to improve the feelings between these two teams. When you look at the game stats on the KIJHL website, it shows that in the second period of the game on Saturday night in Kelowna, there were three fights. Two of them came when Colin Bell and Tyson Taylor of the Chiefs duked it out, and that brought in Colton Carpenter of the Chiefs and Carter Shannon of the Coyotes. They both got an extra game suspension for third man in the fight. They wanted to fight the entire line, line, but Ryan Roseboom skated away in order to remain in the game. The puck was dropped after that, and three seconds later, Austin Cleaver went at it with Zach Whitehead. Now let us review the statistics of this move. Three players from each team are gone from the game. Carpenter, Clone, and Shannon of Asuyu set out the Sunday game, too. In Kelowna losing the three players from their lineup, the points logged by all three add up to a total of 11. With Asuyu's losing Cleaver, Bell, and Shannon, that takes 50 points out of the lineup. 50 to 11. That's a pretty good change. Now these stats are there for anyone to read, plus a stat that showed the Asuyu's Coyotes went into the game having a total of 351 minutes in penalties. By comparison, Kelowna is taking a whopping 621 minutes in penalties. Now Asuyu's took 87 minutes in penalties in the second period, and that, folks, is a quarter of the total that they've taken in the previous 12 games. Now today when we watch the NHL and junior hockey, the 1975 Philadelphia Flyers style of slow rough hockey is passed. Today it's a game and speed and skill are at the forefront. That stuck out in spades during the World Cup of Hockey and particularly that North American team. Hell, every hockey fan became their supporters due to the speed and a half a dozen juniors from there are coming into the NHL not taking a back seat to anyone. Even Connor McDavid still hasn't had a full season in the NHL. And he and Mitch Barner of the Maple Leafs can still be playing in their final year of junior hockey. And two teenagers coming out of Finland are looking good good for both the Jets and the Oilers. Now the KIJHL has a rule against stage fights where the puck is dropped and immediately a fight breaks out. That carries a three-game suspension. You know, I think the same thing should apply when it's obvious in this case that a fight against the top line by the other team's third or fourth line comes in with actions that get them all tossed in the game. When fans notice it, as they did this weekend, that it reflects on the league. Coyotes did prevail in Cologne on Saturday night 7-5. to five. They did lead 5-2 to two going into the third period. But a couple of penalties allowed the Chiefs to tie it at 5-all by the eight-minute mark. Jackson Glimple scored the game winner midway through the period, and Carter Robinson iced it with an empty net or a second of the game. Ryan Roseboom also potted a pair, Caitlin Commission and Daniel Stone also scoring. Ryan's two goals, why he was there, he stayed in the game. It was a tough game Saturday night with the Coyotes winning it 4-1, to one, but it was very close. Coyotes leading 2 to nothing, heading into the third period, but at that two-minute mark, Colin Bell got his second of the game, and a mere 13 seconds later, Austin Cleaver ripped the shot from the left, left side, which stung goaltender Tanner Marshall, and then Cleaver hammered in his own rebound. After that, it was frustration city for Kelowna. They made a steady progression to the penalty box. The big goal, though, was the power play marker for Daniel Stone late in the second period. Coyotes were up 1-0. Daniel had three attempts at a one-timer on the power play, and it was his third attempt, which was an absolute howitzer that hit the twine. Colin Bell wasn't around to take the curtain call as the game's number one star. 
He and Chiefs Brett Weidela decided to duke it out with 10 all three left in the third period. Four seconds later, and they would both be sitting out another game. Big Halloween, it was costume night. Sponsored by the Yasuyu's Buy Low store. They gave out yellow Buy Low bags with goodies in them. They had the pumpkin bowling on the ice in the first period and the costume winners in the second. Also spotted the Sun Bowl Arena on a sign painted in blood red runny letters that read, A.G. Foods, Milo's Agonizing Little Sister. And for that, they get the nod for the side of the week and top promotion marks for Asuyu's Milo and Asuyu's A.G. Foods. Well, as the smoke clears, Coyotes find themselves all tied with Summerland, 22 points each, while Kelowna's 21. Asuyu's, though, with two games in hand and both the Steam and the Chiefs. Friday night, Coyotes are in North Okanagan. Last time there, mid-October, they won it 4-zip. Saturday night's another early first-place battle right back here. The Summerland Steam at the Sun Bowl to meet the Coyotes. They've beaten the Steam twice this year. Last win two weeks ago was when Summerland had three players suspended as well as a few injuries. Some of them will be back in the Steam lineup. On the scoring front, Paxton Malone of Spokane leads with 29 points. Judd Rapoli and Colonia's Broda Dale each have 28. Daniel Stone's got 26, Colin Bell 25, and Carter Shannon makes it into the top 20 with 20 points. Saturday night's game is the usual 7.35 face-off time, game sponsored by TELUS. The new TELUS fiber optic line installed in the Sun Bowl now allows us to send out Coyote home games on the web in high definition. Three weekends in a row where first place has been sort of up for grabs and hey, how's your tossing arms? Rubber duck toss into the fishbowl is moving on up there. $500 on Saturday night. Did you say $500? Yes, I said $500. I'm Tom Shields of the Coyotes and the K on Cairo.